Comment. Nak comment. Comment. Rak pun sah. Rak pun sah. Rak pun sah. Rak pun sah. Nasi. You are Yasrat Sekha. Yes, sir. Acha, please tell something. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Yashad Sekha. I was born in Lucknow. And I have completed my class 12 from Lamartine College, Lucknow. And from then I completed my graduation in Economics Honours from St. Stephen's College in 2018. And since then I have been uh, preparing for UPSC. This is your first attempt? Uh, third attempt. Third attempt. In the other attempts, you went up to what level? Interview level? So in, the, uh, in the second attempt, uh, I went to the interview level. This is my third attempt. The first attempt, I couldn't clear prelims. As you are from St. Stephen's College, is one of the leading colleges from yes, here. And it is 8th ranked by NIRF. Yes, Tell me, the, uh, when it, was it established and how? So it was established in uh, on 1st of February 1881. Uh, the reason was that it was established by the uh, Cambridge Mission to Delhi, uh, which had come to establish it because uh, a government college that existed before and a, a school by the name of St. Stephen's also existed before the revolt of 1857, but they were all closed after 1857 and the government had brought out a policy uh, to promote education, English education in India. So to pursue those efforts, uh, the Cambridge mission under Mr. Allnut, he, he ended up becoming the first uh, principal of a college, in the, the school was established. One question, I will transfer these things to you, Ghar. What is capability theory of uh, poverty by Amartya Sen? You are from economics. So, capability theory is simply uh, basically assumes the fact that our economic growth and a person's economic uh, growth and poverty is a person's economic growth and development and why he does not end up becoming po poor depends on his capability which is the result of his functionings and those functionings are calculated in terms of how well he, he, he has been served in terms of health education and other basic necessities of life so basically if one of this functioning let's say in terms of not having access to proper education does not function well he ends up becoming incapable uh, to work himself out of poverty. He told that poverty cannot be decided on income yes, sir. or consumption, yes, sir. but it has to be seen whether he is capable to have other necessary things yes, related to poverty. Please. So, uh, Yashad, yes, I pronounced it correctly, right? Yes, yes. Yashad. So, you are an economics graduate. Yes, sir. Uh, do you know what is Pareto efficiency? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, Pareto efficiency is a situation where nobody else can be made better off without making somebody else worse off. So, may, may I explain with the help, with the help of an example? Please go. Ma'am, let's say the economy has, let's say, 100 rupees and you need 1 rupee to make 1 gram of butter and you need 1 rupee to make 1 gun. So, now the economy, let's say, is producing 50 uh, grams of butter and 50 guns. So, the, all the resources of the economy are productively employed. Now, let's say a war broke out. In that situation, to produce one more gun, you need to take out resources away from the butter. So the people who are having access to butter, their welfare will reduce, and people who are who need guns, their welfare will uh, will increase. So this is a classic situation of uh, of Pareto efficiency that to make somebody like people who wants more guns better off, we need to reduce the welfare of the people who are consuming uh, butter less well off. Can you help me understand the problem of moral hazard with the aid of a current policy, any policy of your choice of the Indian government? My moral hazard is an economic uh, is an is, is an economic externality that is a result of the fact that when costs are not calculated, it may it may lead to people who are exercising those benefits to think that there are no wrong uh, wrong benefit wrong uh, wrong things out of it for example the government usually goes for uh, farm waivers now this incentivizes even farmers who has the capacity to repay loans to not repay loans to find ignorance about the fact that the government has brought out a uh, farm loan waiver policy so this is a moral hazard that's why for the for, from, from the next time even the banks who want to give loan to the reasonable farmers they would shy away from uh, giving away loans because they think that they will not return and even the farmers who are capable of returning loans they will not 
want to return the loans because they will think that they can get away with it. One of the primary reasons of the subprime crisis uh, uh, could be attributed to the also to the failure of the efficient market theory. Uh, having said that, I would want your thoughts on how can information asymmetry cause problem in terms of stock trading in the Indian market. My information asymmetry is a, is a scenario where all the market players do not have access to the same information or equally to the, to the same information. So let's say if I if I were a broker and if or if if I were in some cahoots with with somebody who is running let's say national stock exchange and they were to give me some information about some stock or some some uh, classified information about a company and I were to buy that company because the because that news was to be released tomorrow then suddenly the price of the stock I would purchase uh, the stock price today at a cheap rate. And tomorrow when, when that news is released, let's say the company is seeing investment by Apple or the company is seeing investment by Google, its market price will go up and then I will be able to sell those uh, stocks at a higher price making a benefit. And this is the same thing that happened with the co-location case of National Stock Exchange where Chitra Subramaniam uh, and some of our staff was, were involved in reducing access by 0.01% or 0.02 second of information to all the market players. Some were benefited and some were not. Can you connect this with efficient market theory? What does efficient market theory say? Ma'am, I would not be able to do Okay. That. Uh, want to know uh, from you, what is the current policy with respect to the inflation targeting regime in India? And how does it work? Ma'am, uh, there has been a lot of discussion over what the role of RBI should be. Eventually, in 2016, the government and the RBI came to an agreement that the role of the gov of the RBI should be primarily to regulate inflation with the, with the with the objective of growth also. So now RBI has set a target of four plus minus two percent of inflation targeting, and and uh, for for that purpose uh, they have to take <coughs> steps that inflation does not go beyond that. If inflation go beyond the target, let's say it goes less than two percent or it goes above six percent for three consecutive quarters, then RBI can be held responsible and they will have to report to the government and and the immediate steps may follow. So basically the purpose is to rein in inflation because we saw double digit inflation in early 2010 and 11. So that brought about a consciousness in, in, in the government and this was also uh, uh, legislated also. So this has become the primary responsibility of RBI. My last question to you, what do you understand by monetization of deficit? Ma'am, monetization of uh, deficit means printing money Basically, monetization of deficit can be done through two ways. It can be direct monetization, it can be indirect monetization. Direct monetization is the printing of money by the RBI to supply the funds to the government to bridge the deficit that has been created because of, uh, because of discrepancies between expenditure and the earnings. Indirect deficit is what usually happens when the government issues uh, treasury bills or long term government dated securities. It is a problem that direct monetization of debt has often be, has often led to runaway inflation. We have seen this in case of many countries like uh, in, in, the, uh, in the early 1990s after the liberalization, uh, we saw a brief period of uh, high inflation which was primarily attributed to the fact that the government, uh, that the RBI was directly monetizing the government debt. Now this has been stopped by the FRBM Act. However, there have been calls recently that it should be reinstated because the pandemic has dented the government's revenue sources and the expenditure has increased. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Mr. Yeshwan. Yes, sir. Okay, okay Mr. Yeshwan. Uh, what do you know about Chandrayaan 3? Sir, so Chandrayaan 3 is a proposed uh, project of uh, uh, Indian Space Research Organization to go and explore um, uh, moon, given that uh, Chandrayaan 2 could not land on it successfully. Okay. Uh, PM 2.5. What is this PM 2.5? So they are very small micro uh, 2.5 mic uh, mic uh, uh, small PM part. stands for particulate matter. Particulate matter. So 2.5. What is the unit? 2.5 micron. Micron or micro. Micron. Yeah. So um, what is the present level of PM 2.5 or we can say annual average in Delhi and uh, we can say NCR. Uh, approximate idea? Sir, I don't know. 
Exactly. Anyway, what could be the unit of that? In uh, this is the unit of the size of the particle, as you have just mentioned, that is micron or yes, micrometer, you have mentioned. Yes, sir. What would be the unit of that? So I don't know, sir. If we measure uh, particulate matters, anyway, that will be MCM, microgram per cubic meter. Anyway, yes, no problem. Now, uh, related with economics, yes, sir. you have studied economics from Delhi University, St. Stephens. So, what is the logo of uh, University of Delhi, by the way? It's an elephant. Uh, elephant. And what is written in Sanskrit? Sir, I've read it. I can't. Hmm? Satyam. Yes, yes, sir. I've anyway, read it. So you might be very well aware of PNB fraud. PNB. Yeah, Punjab PNB fraud. Punjab National Bank fraud. Are you aware of Yes, sir. Okay. So, what was the major reasons that this fraud occurred? I believe that this fraud was the one where fake letters of receipts were issued by yeah, Nirav Modi. One and what else? So this and is another one was misuse of SWIFT. So what is that SWIFT? Is that an acronym? And if yes, then it stands for? So misuse of I cannot. SWIFT, S-W-I-F-T. It is an acronym. Anyway, yes. it is an acronym. It stands for? Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial uh, Telecommunication. Telecommunication, that's right. So, this is the full name of SWIFT. Okay. So, misuse of SWIFT was there. Yes. And in addition to that, ICAI did not exercise its powers. What is this ICAI, by the way? So, I think Institute of Chartered Accountant of India. That's right. So, it did not exercise its function properly. It did not bring it to the notice of the government that what is happening. Keeping this in view, yes. number one, an act was enacted. What was the name of the act? So economic Offenders Act. The Fugitive Economic Offenders Fug Act. Yes, Fugitive yeah, Economic Very offenders. right. Now you tell me, what do you mean by Fugitive Economic Offender? Sir, so, so there is a very specific definition given in the bill mm -hmm. that a person should have committed a fraud of at least 100 crores. That's right, number one. And that he was he was uh, he was called for a hearing by the specific court, and he did not appear before the court. Led away the country. Led away the country, then he would be declared right. as so this is fugitive economic offender. Act. Yes. Sir. And keeping in view the fact that ICI did not exercise its power, did not not power, did not exercise its function properly. Yes. Under the Companies Act, an amendment was made simultaneously when this act was enacted. So, what was that amendment made in the Companies Act? Can you tell me? And an authority was created so that it can look after uh, this problem. So, what was that authority and under which section of the Companies Act that authority was created? Sir, I can't seem to recall. Anyway, no problem. Now, uh, you are from Lucknow, sir. Oh, oh, Lucknow. Okay. Yes. So in Lucknow, uh, Def Expo was organized, uh, say about two years back. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, can you recall that? I do have a very faint memory of the same. I I, I, I did not read about it. I haven't re read about it in great detail recently, but I know that uh, a Def Expo. Okay. Is Smart City Performance Index? Are you aware of that index? Smart City Performance Index. My question here is that which was the state this time what happened when this index was prepared it was also seen that which is the state which is performing best all over the country. Individual cities number one as it was being done earlier and last time it was also decided that a state should also be identified that this is at number one, this is at number two, this is at number three. So, which was the state which was placed at number one? So, I think that I read about it. I'm not exactly sure about it, but I think if I were to uh, guess the state, I think it would be Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> it is Uttar Pradesh. Only. Yes, sir, because I think yeah. I had some... Placed some... at first as far well as state as a whole is concerned. Yes, I had, a fa I, I had a faint memory about it. Okay, can you name famous economists from our country? Sir, Amart Sen, Vivek, Dr. Amart Sen, Vivek Devroy. So, he is Nobel laureate also, yes, eh? Dr. Amartya Sen. 
So, what was his? Uh, I mean, what for he was awarded Nobel Prize? So he was awarded his Nobel Prize for his uh, for his theory on uh, famine, if I'm not wrong, on a uh, theory on famine that he wrote that famine was not the result of uh, uh, absence of food prices in India, rather it was the result of uh, the British policies in India. Okay, there is a state in southern India uh, in which an advisory council or committee, economic advisory council has been constituted which is that state so tamil nadu tamil nadu and this is headed by one of the nobel laureates by a nobel laureate what is the name of the nobel laureate by whom it is headed so uh, wife of mr abhijit banerji esther daplo she uh, yeah f s no so i was wife who S. shared nobel prize with yes. him and who was the third person who shared Nobel Prize with Adal, with, with, with Abhijit Panaj. So there were three persons. I can't think of Okay, it. thank you. You are an economic, economic student from St. Stephen's College. So before we go on to economics, can you tell me about the minority status of the St. Stephen's College? So my St. Stephen's College is a minority government <coughs> uh, funded uh, college under Article 29 and Article 30 of the Constitution of India, as a result of which it has a it has a body which, which is responsible for appointing the principal. The principal can be majorly from the minor uh, from the Christian community and there are around 400 seats that are available every year for the undergraduate students and they have been given the right to reserve at least 50 percent for the minorities, especially for the Christians. So for, for example, let's say in my in my batch of economics, there were around 55 students around 27-28 uh, were reserved for the Christian minorities, whether they come from CNI or they come from PWD CNI, there was different categories. Uh, then uh, amongst the other seats, the reservation policies apply. So in that context. Okay, so recently, a few years ago, there was a controversy related to the minority status of Aligarh Muslim University. Do you think it is uh, in the spirit of the constitution that universities and colleges of higher education should be given the minority status. So personally, I'm uh, I don't think so that any school or college should be given any minority or majority status. I think these are very prestigious universities and they can survive even without that status also. So whether whether it is Hindu um, uh, Hindu Hindu Banaras Hindu University or whether it is Aligarh Muslim Universities or whether it is St. Stephen's College. Now, these are all very prestigious colleges and universities which can either raise funding or which have enough clout within themselves that they can survive even without the minority status. Okay. So, now coming to the economics part, uh, yes, you mentioned FRBM Act. Yes. Can you mention some of the mandatory statements which have to be made by the government under FRBM Act? So, the first one is a medium term fiscal policy statement. Uh, the second one will have to be macroeconomic framework statement. The third uh, and the third one has to be I am not able to recall it's but fine. I think it's it is fine. expenditure statement. It's fine. Uh, uh, doesn't matter. Can you define fiscal deficit for me? So fiscal deficit is a difference between the expenditure of the government and the revenues. Revenues which are generated from non-borrowed sources. So basically, indi it indicates the borrowing potential, or, the, or what is the what does the government plan on borrowing next year? Okay. Suppose I say that Ukrainian crisis has been a blessing in disguise for India economically. Yes, sir. Can you tell me the pros and cons of this statement? So, in terms of why it can be considered a, a, a blessing in disguise, is the fact that our Wheat export are supposed to be rising. They were 1.5 million tons last year. They've risen to around 6 million tons recently and they are expected to rise to 10 million tons. So in that context, also the gap that has been created in various electronics uh, exports can be bridged by us. Recently, we crossed 400 billion uh, target of uh, exports and the major component was engineering goods and crisis helped us. So negatively, if, if I were to look at the issue, I think the oil crisis is going to dent our GDP growth by 1% as Raghuram Rajan has said. So secondly, I think that the price pressures 
will not only be felt by the people who buy oil but uh, but since oil is used as a component in all the production processes then this may lead to entrenching of inflation and rbi may have to uh, let go of its accommodative stance and which will hurt growth eventually so can we say that this oil related strain on the economy is a supply side shock yes it is a supply side shock so what will be the response of the inflation targeting regime in case it in case the inflation reaches 6% due to this kind of supply side shock so a supply side shock will feed into a demand side shock in, in terms of let's say somebody who has a consumption expenditure very less consumption expenditure now he will have to pay more for oil he will have to pay may pay more for other communities so his demand will also decrease so it will also have a demand effect but since rbi does not since since the government only has limited options to curb supply side inflations the only option that is available to rbi under the inflation targeting framework would be to cut interest rates because if interest rate if the inflation rate crosses 6% then interest rates will have to be increased and that will reduce consumption uh, spending power of the people and that will pull a demand side effect on the inflation front and this will pull pull, pull down prices so okay. yes. so how do you measure poverty and unemployment in india first poverty then unemployment so poverty is measured using headcount ratio under different committees who have given the recommendations uh, tendulkar committee and i think recently rbi also brought out a multi dimensional poverty report according to which around 37% of population is multi dimensionally poor also we use the world bank uh, one the rbi niti ayog niti ayog okay. niti ayog's multi dimensional poverty report unemployment sir, is usually measured using periodic labor force data and there are also private sectors like uh, center for monitoring indian economy which recently br- which bring out data on unemployment there was a lot of controversy regarding the veracity of the figures given by different surveys regarding unemployment what is your stand on that so i think that if i were to give an example of my state let's say uttar pradesh it is supposed to have the lowest uh, unemployment rate in india of, of around 2, 2.4% but we'll also have to look at the fact that a lot of people who are actually searching for employment they've actually held back they have not officially qualified themselves as as looking for jobs so they are not counted in the uh, unemployment figures so when such survey says that unemployment rate is 2.4% we have to be a little circumspect that it is not actually 2.4% it's just that a lot of people are not actually looking for the job because they have become so confident that they will not find one so there might be cert but then there then there are certain surveys who extrapolate this figure of unemployment to let's say 10 to 15% that is also wrong i think employment rate if if in up as per my estimate should be around 5 to 6% and not 2.4% okay my final question what are randomized controlled trials so randomized controlled t- trials is a is an experiment based trials in which two groups are created one to which an actual exp- an actual medicine let's say for for it, if it is conducted for medicine an actual medicine is provided for the other group a placebo is provided but these the participants of this groups are selected very in a very random manner and they're not told whether they're receiving placebo or they they're receiving the actual medicine or they are receiving income for let's say for basic minimum transfer basic income transfer and then the results are calculated to come to a conclusion about that small whether the medicine is working or not this uh, randomized control trial was one of the reasons why abhijit benerji and esther daplo were given the nobel prize it's a tool to test the efficiency of, uh, of <coughs> any medicine or economic policy oh, thank you sir yes sir yes sir one thing i will ask because you had geography Yes, how la nina effect is beneficial for india so <coughs> la nina <coughs> is the cooling of waters in the central and eastern uh, pacific ocean so it helps uh, indian economy because it leads to usually higher than higher than average rainfalls in the in the, in the southwest monsoon season of india yes. so this leads to both uh, greater water availability in our reservoirs and at the same time it leads to greater productivity of crops however there is also a a negative side to it that it may lead to flood also in southern india okay my point is now your interview is over